just over about a week ago. There was no snow up here, just straight rock after the, the long hot summer. And in the past week, uh, some winter storms have been moving in and dropping the first snow here. And uh, I want to camp up here. Oh, geez, geez. Don't blow the wall down, please, please, please. Growing up in the Fraser Valley, I've spent most of my life under the watchful presence of Mount Sham. I've only hiked to the summit once, and that was in the summer, as the road access to get there can be pretty sketchy, and I've never had a vehicle that could get up the logging roads. With every year that goes by, I've always enjoyed watching the first blankets of snow cover the peak and bring on the coming months of winter. Earlier this summer, I bought an old dirt bike from a farmer's barn, and I want to ride this thing up the river valley as far as I can go, and then hike the rest of the way to the summit, and hopefully catch some of the early snowfall of the season, and spend my first night on a winter summit camping alone. Hey friend, good morning. Uh, I just pulled off the main road here, so hopefully you can hear me a little bit better over the wind noise in my helmet. Um, I've been riding for a little over an hour this morning, and to be honest, it started off pretty wet and miserable. <laughs> this hopefully is like the perfect two-day window to make the trip happen in the way that I've been dreaming of. My bike setup this morning, to be honest, is a, is a little bit janky. I don't have a rack and pannier system, so I just uh, strapped a duffel bag to the back of the bike and I put my tent up here and uh, that's kind of getting the job done, but it's pushing up against my backpack and it's making it all pretty awkward to, to move around. Chipmunk Forest Service Road, this is us right here. Time to head up. Let's, uh, let's do it. Oh man, this is a... Uh, Really nice fall vibes on the way up here. The mist is just making this experience feel pretty rugged. I think I should be able to just kind of pitter patter through here. <laughs> I'm so psyched. I'm so psyched. Let's go.
here at the parking lot where I'm gonna leave the bike. Uh, kind of scrambling because it's raining here. I thought, it was, I thought it was gonna be snowing here. So everything's kind of getting soaked. And I made a big mistake. I had my camel back in my duffel bag thinking that was a, a nice place to put it because of the weight, keep it off my back. And somehow it opened up and just soaked, completely soaked my synthetic warm layer. So that's really frustrating. My hiking boots are soaked. <laughs> I'm so frustrated. <laughs> what a way to start this off. Uh, we're here, we're about to start hiking. I thought it was gonna be snow here. It's definitely rain and all my stuff in the duffel bag is completely soaked. So looks like I'm gonna be hiking in my moto boots. Let's go. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I just downed a chicken pad thai. I was getting a little nervous there that uh, I'm getting grumpy. Not seeing snow, soaked through. Not to worry, just hungry. Well, uh, just starting to make our way up the hillside here. And I've got a tough decision to make. My feet are blistering bad in these boots. From where I'm at right now, I have a lot of climbing left to go, and it's on the inclines that the feet are really rubbing. I'm gonna hike back to the motorcycle, change my boots, and by the time I do that and get back over here, there's not gonna be enough daylight left for me to climb up much higher. Okay, goodbye for the second time. Back onto the trail. The insides of these boots are completely soaked, but pulling off those motocross boots, I've got nice bubbled, bubbled blisters on my heels. So I uh, put some blister cream and tape on. And hopefully that kind of works out. They feel really not great, to be honest with you. Almost back to my, my bag over there on the hillside. There's my bag. I gave it a good think and I'm gonna lose light in a couple hours. So instead of pushing any higher at the slow rate that I'm going, I'm gonna set up camp and hopefully uh, through resting overnight, maybe my heels will feel a little better in the morning and I can reevaluate then because I'd very much like to get up to the snow line.
Well, friend, good morning. Through the night, the temperature continued to drop, and this is the first morning I've ever woken up camping in a tent with snow. <laughs> That's a pleasant surprise because when I went to bed, it was five degrees, and when I woke up this morning, it was negative two. I got a little thermometer. Uh, so this is kind of exciting for me. The visibility is really great right now. I'm gonna be heading up behind this kind of knoll here. That's where the peak is. And I'm gathering all my things up this morning. Let's go. Let's go. wind here for a little bit so thought I'd do a little check-in almost at the summit <laughs> almost there baby let's go Right on. Woo! So big drop off all right here. It's pretty socked in, you can't see it. And then over here, this is where I plan to make my home. This rock structure right here is where I'm really hoping I can sleep tonight to protect from the, the crazy wind that happens up here. I kind of forgot how big this thing was. I was really hoping that there's going to be enough space in here for the footprint of my tent. I think I'm going to pull out the shovel and start digging and kind of see if I can make this area work. Because if not, I'm going to have to start scrambling for another spot because I want to be well set and ready to go before uh, before it even comes close to, to becoming dark. So let's uh, let's start digging.
that actually looks very promising it just squeezes in within like an inch on both sides like it's right up against the rocks forecast is right it should be a somewhat storm tonight the wind is going to be a little aggressive which I'm not looking forward to well this is where I'm camping tonight look at that <laughs> Thankfully, the wind isn't just constant. It's kind of coming and going, and um, that's nice because the wind is very cold. Uh, to, to be honest, I, as we settle into the evening here, the sun set about a half hour ago. For the last couple hours, I've been pretty cold. I'm certainly not warm. My, my toes are very numb. My boots are still wet, um, and... I've got a change of socks, so I'll be able to hike out of here. I'll be able to get my feet warm tonight. I've got feet warmers, but right now as I get ready to go to bed, I am cold. Uh, and to bypass that, I've kind of just been hiking little circles around here on the summit. As, uh, as it gets a little darker here into the day, I'm probably going to start doing that a little bit less. Uh, it's good to be up here. I I feel a little bit more exposed than I'm used to when I'm camping in the van. It's it's not camping as luxury, so it's hard to even feel like that's extreme in the winter sense. So to give ourselves kind of an evening activity to do here as I wait for for nighttime, let's make some pancakes. <sighs> I've realized as I get closer to my 30s that I'm a little soft. <laughs> There's a lot of experiences that I thought I would have had in my life by now that I just have avoided doing, I think mainly because they're uncomfortable. And I've made a career out of filming other people do things that push their comfort zones. That's what I do with my production company. That's the, that's the films that I make as I film other people go do crazy stuff. And the whole while I'm thinking, oh, like I would love if someone watched these intense films where, where people are doing rope swings and slack lines in the outback. I would love if when people watch that, they would feel just like motivated to just get outside. And that truly, that truly has been my goal. I just want people to get outside. And if that's my goal, I need to keep doing that myself. Like what value is it at all of climbing a mountain? even if you don't see the view like what what does that experience add to your existence because i would i would beg to to argue that it does add to your existence um and i think doing hard things is good for for the mind the body and the soul and i want to do more things that make me uncomfortable things that i wake up in the morning and i'm like why am i doing this because as much as when i woke up this morning i was cold and as much as pacing around on the top of a mountain today, I've been cold. Um, I think it's going to help me just be more, I don't know, more present and thankful in day-to-day -day normal life. <laughs> I, I'm not too sure to be honest with you, but I'm hoping to find out. And that is why we are up here. And sure, making a pancake trying to fry a piece of bacon on this pan is not going well for me right now it's sticking like crazy i don't really know what to do but that's just kind of all part of it you know and here is the pancake <laughs> uh, 
I brought a little jar of maple syrup up with me. Here we go. First, uh, first taste test of the mountain uh, pancake. Mmm. As annoying this has been to cook, and as much as it's stuck to my pan, it is really good. Mmm. I think I'm going to make another one. This is good. Maybe when I'm struggling to clean up my tent in the cold tomorrow, I'm going to wonder why the heck I didn't just stay home. I'm glad I came out here. I'm glad. Man, this wind is just gnarly. It's been tearing at my tent for like three hours. Like I can't, I can't sleep. Uh, it's like the wind is trying to just bear hug my tent off the mountain. Oh boy, this is gonna be a long night. It's five o'clock. It's been blowing like crazy for the last four hours. It hasn't slowed down. Oh my gosh. Holy frick, dude! Ah! It's getting on everything! Snow's getting on everything! Oh, jeez, jeez. Don't blow the wall down, please, please, please. Oh, my boots are just filled with snow. Holy sh at this point, I'm more just worried that the wind is going to tear my tent. And I don't want that to happen. One, because I want to stay in my tent till it's daylight. Because I don't really want to hike out here when it's dark. And two, because it's really nice wind protection, all things considered. If it does tear, I'll scramble to get my, my snow gear on and my goggles and I'll just hike out of here in the wind, in the dark with a headlamp. But I don't want to do that. So I'm just really hoping this tent stays in one piece. The sun has finally risen in the Alpine. I've got light. You've got to see what's going on here. I woke up to my tent torn open. Thankfully it wasn't an actual tear. It's just a zipper, and look at this right here. Look at that. Let's, uh, let's get packed up. <laughs> My hands are too numb right now to pack everything away the way I brought it. Even though this wind is being a total pain in the ass right now, the fact that I have visibility is definitely making my life a lot more bearable.
Good morning, Chilliwack. Hi. Let's get out of here. Well, the bike runs, that's good. Always nice to come back to a working bike. Uh, not gonna lie, I'm pretty tired. Uh, reflecting on the experience on the way down. Definite positive, definite stoke. A lot of lessons learned. Uh, things like not getting my gear all soaked before we even start. I need to come up with some other hobbies to do while I'm sitting in a tent <laughs> as the wind is threatening to tear it down. Uh, all in all, I'm really grateful that I did that, and I'm really grateful that it was just the right amount of challenging. If I tried to do a trip like this solo, maybe even a couple weeks from now, the snow level would be quite a bit higher, and that means avalanche risk is also quite a bit higher. And so, kind of combining a bunch of new factors here for me, it's best to keep it as simple as possible. And uh, I think we did that while also expanding my comfort zone. So. I came prepared, I had all my supplies, I used all my, uh, well I've got plenty left over still, but I used my heat packets a bunch, I'm doing every little trick I could to stay warm. I definitely feel like a little bit of a cold wuss still because it wasn't that cold. I want to say a massive thank you to my channel members who helped make videos like this possible. I really appreciate y'all and uh, I think it's super cool that you put your money behind my channel to make cool videos like this. So that's a two big thumbs up for me. I'm gonna load the, the gear back on uh, and, and head home. That's gonna be it for this adventure. Thanks so much for watching. And remember, life's better when you make stuff. Peace.